Live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., you're listening to Impact Showdown with your host, Lee Sanders. Everybody, this is the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders, and you're checking out a new Impact Showdown Radio live right now on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show and at our sister website at infinityoneproductions.com. We are now joining TNA Impact Live in progress right now as they are two minutes past overtime as we see the TNA World Heavyweight Champion Austin Aries with Jeff Hardy right now. Very intense moment right here as we see Austin Aries letting Jeff Hardy know that this is going to be more than just a match come this Sunday as he is sick and tired of upper management and TNA catering towards Jeff Hardy. He's been asking TNA management for the past two months now to change his music, change his video. He wants everything new to reflect him being a champion, but they've been putting so much time and emphasis into Jeff Hardy making new video packages for him. And oh my God, folks, we just saw Austin Aries give that trademark Brain Buster DDT to Jeff Hardy to lay him out in the ring as he is livid right now. That is the way you end TNA. You end it with your world heavyweight champion. It is about damn time they end it on a TNA world heavyweight champion route. For those of you that were complaining for a good number of weeks there, and also vent your frustration over the way it looked as if Austin Aries was being disrespected since he's had that championship, you would have definitely found this ending very satisfying. Of course, we got the chat room that's loaded up right now. Feel free to jump on in there. We also have the Twitter. You know you can interact with us live during the course of tonight's show. Hit us up right now. We are at Infinity One Prod. You can also interact with us on Facebook at InfinityOneProductions.com. We're going to get you guys caught up on the very latest in TNA Wrestling And then later on, I'm going to be joined by the lovely co-producer Tammy as just the other day, as soon as this word had broke out about Hulk Hogan and the sex tape, none more whose opinion I really value most than the lovely co-producer Tammy and me and her, we always have some very great at-length conversations about some major headlines that just jumps at us out there, whether it's wrestling, entertainment, politics, whatever. We got on a very good, lengthy debate when we were talking about Hulk Hogan and his sex tape. She was making such great, valid points. I told her, I said, you know what, if you're able to find the time tonight on top of doing all you can, plugging us, social media and all that, why don't you go on ahead and make a little cameo on here tonight? I definitely want the audience to hear what you have to say. It'd be nice to really hear from a female's perspective what all you make of what's been happening with the Hulkster. So in a very special segment, we are going to talk about what's going on uh, with that. So this should be a uh, pretty solid show. And, you know, let's go on ahead and let's jump right into it. Hopefully you guys can hear me pretty good. I know, right? Impact Showdown, for once, static-free. It's about damn time. I'm really loving it right now. So let's go on ahead and let's jump right into it. This is the final TNA Impact Live right before our bound 
for Glory Pay-Per-View that's going to be coming our way this Sunday. And you want to talk about a bad week in professional wrestling that we had just last week as Raw ratings were just terrible. TNA Impact ratings, just terrible. Everything was just terrible all last week. You want to talk about a nice way to rebound. We were able to rebound very well with tonight's episode of Impact Live. And, you know, folks, it was one of those type of shows tonight where you're looking at this and you want for TNA to do a very solid job in getting you hyped up for Bound for Glory, the eighth annual Bound for Glory at that. You want for the fans to come away and feel invested, make them feel like they need to come up out those pockets and pay that 40 50 hell, even $60 for some of you to pay to see Bound for Glory this Sunday. TNA Wrestling tonight, phenomenal job right here with this installment of Impact Live. And I love how for once it did not end on a Hulk Hogan sting note, although they did make a few appearances here and there. But more on that in just a little bit. Let's go on ahead and let's take it right up to the very top here as Mike Tanay, Taz, they had greeted us tonight as they informed us about two main event matches that were going to be happening tonight as it was going to be Austin Aries taking on James Storm and then later on it was going to be Jeff Hardy taking on Robert Roode. Now, it opens up with Austin Aries Taking on James Storm, I'm looking at this match very closely right here, and I was just a little bit rattled at how this match had came across. There was just a little bit of dysfunction that was in this match here. Now, I'm hearing from some people, because it got a little weird for us over here at RN, but I hear that uh looked like, who was it? Uh, Robert Roode might have got involved in this match, and as a result of that, he had ended up costing James Storm the defeat. In either case right here, all I know is Austin Aries was just able to pick up a clean win over James Storm. I'm looking at this right here as a way of opening up Impact, and I'm saying, no, this isn't exactly how you want to kick things off. Why would you put Austin Aries in the ring with James Storm? I know you're trying to get those ratings up, especially after a pretty bad week in the ratings, but, you know, this isn't exactly how you do it. You want to have your strong guys that's going to be going into the pay-per-view matched up with folks that aren't really doing too hot right here. So I wasn't exactly too pleased to see this contest, I thought it was a waste of time, quite honestly. I would have preferred seeing Austin Aries take on, hell, Kid Cash or Chavo. I, I would have preferred to see guys that we really have not seen on the TNA roster or on television, really, for a good number of weeks. That would have been better to me rather than see this, but we had... To deal with this as it was, it was a solid match nonetheless. We also had ended up seeing in a backstage segment, Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, they were really getting into it as uh, AJ uh, AJ Styles, he really feels as though Kurt Angle really was saying some bad stuff about him and how he really doesn't need AJ Styles, how he can win the tag team championships by himself, and Kurt Angle, he's trying to calm his tag partner down and say, look, you're playing into exactly the type of game that Daniel Zekazarian wants you to play. Come on, you need to focus right here, man. We're on the same page, but he was not able to get through to AJ Styles. As from there, we see the Hawkster and the Stinger. They get ready to make their way out, and they would talk about the bad hand that they were dealt with when it came to the whole aces and eights, and this was where it got pretty interesting right here. We had saw Hawkster Sting. They both are agreeing that aces and eights, they had put them into a very bad spot. 
that they have put them in a position where Hawkster, as much as he would like to try to help the Stinger out, he can do nothing more but sit back and watch as his good friend has to fight the good fight alongside Bully Ray and Hulk Hogan. He's letting it be known right off the break. He still has a bit of reservations about Sting teaming up with Bully Ray and Hogan Sting. They both agree that the deal that they made with Aces and Aces was almost like making a deal with the devil. And this actually prompted the TNA World Tag Team Champions to come out as Daniels and Kazarian. They say to the Hulkster and the Stinger that, hey, how can you select somebody like Bully Ray to fight alongside the Stinger when he is one of those type of guys you just can't trust? Out of all the guys in the company to pick from, you choose somebody that really does not spell out trustworthy, and they actually make a very bold suggestion to the Hulkster. They say, you know what, remove them from their tag team match at Sunday's pay-per-view. Have one of them possibly team up with the Stinger to take on Aces and Eights, or better yet, why not just get the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle to team up with the Stinger to face aces and eights and this actually had prompted bully ray to come out and say to them you know what without a doubt kurt angle very solid pick right there but this isn't a wrestling match no 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 this is a straight up fight and when it comes to a fight you want to have somebody like me in the stinger's corner bully ray once again pleading his case to the Hawkster and Stinger saying, look, he's the best guy for the job. He's the right candidate. Mentioning how Aces and Aces had attacked Mr. Anderson last week. For those of you that might have missed it there, it was actually Mr. Anderson that was supposed to be teaming up with Sting as Hawkster and Sting. That was the pick that they had agreed on, but those damn Aces and Aces, they ended up attacking Mr. Anderson in a backstage segment area. It looked like it was happening right outside of the Impact Wrestling Arena in the parking lot area. Mr. Anderson, MIA tonight, not even an update on how he's doing. I would have loved to have heard some type of a health update for him just to kind of still keep him in the loop right there, but it is what it is. Hopefully they will come right back to it after Sunday's pay-per-view, but for now, no reference of Mr. Anderson And we see in the meantime, Bully Ray Sting, he is just going back and forth. We see the tag team champions, everybody, they're just all going back and forth with one another. When finally, Bully Ray, he gets an idea. He says, you know what, Hulkster, let me prove to you that you can trust me for sure. Put me in a match against these two guys, Daniels and Kazarian, as Bully Ray will team up with Sting to take these guys on. Hulk Hogan, he loved the sound of this. He makes it official. It's one of the main events that we're going to be seeing for the night. Also, we had got to see Bobby Roode in a backstage pass. Now, let's just get the backstage pass stuff out the way right now because there really wasn't too much stuff that was happening right here. It was pretty much one of those you really didn't miss anything. Jeremy Borash this time around, he had some pretty solid guests that were popping up. Notice, though, for you guys that were checking out Backstage Pass, Miss Taryn Terrell, she had popped up quite a few times on top of wrestling a match. She was just all over the place. I love seeing that cute little thing. She's she's all right in my book. But we had saw in Backstage Pass one of many segments, Jeremy Borash was joined by the it factor of professional wrestling, Bobby Roode. Uh, he was joined by Miss Tessmacher. Um, he was also joined by Zima Ion. Uh, he, he had some pretty uh, solid moments right here. Surprisingly, he did not get that usual weekly appearance by the TNA Tag Champions and Daniels and Kazarian. I guess they wanted to take a pass on this night. I love how Backstage Pass started off kind of late, though. I don't know if you guys were picking that up, but if you had went to their website at Impact Wrestling Chat, then you also went to them on YouTube. They did not start on time. They were actually about, uh, I would say, 10 minutes late there. 
and you had a lot of angry people. Let me tell you, it's amazing how many people actually do care about that backstage pass. DNA definitely on to something right there. Let's talk about some of these other matches that we had saw on the episode of Impact Live tonight. We had saw Hernandez defeat AJ Styles. We also had saw Daniels and Kazarian in that tag match against Sting and Bully Ray. As that match, probably one of my favorites of the night, you could really get into this. I love how we had shades of Team 3D as we had saw Sting tell Bully Ray to go get the tables. And we just see Bully Ray standing there, and he's not really sure what to do. But finally, he actually goes out. He gets a damn table. And next thing you know, we see Sting. He's playing quarterback here. He's trying to make sure that Bully Ray's able to do his thing. We see, as always, and you know it's always going to be Daniels when it comes to something messed up happening, whether it involves ladders, chairs, tables. You know if you have Daniels involved in that type of match, he's usually going to be at the butt end of that whole gimmick match. Well, we would see poor Daniels get that infamous power bomb from Bully Ray and that top turnbuckle and just crashed him through that table. It was an awesome moment right here. I was really loving that. And Earl Hefner, oh, damn Earl. He called the bell. He gave the victory to Daniels and Kazaria. But still, this was a very freaking solid contest right here. Disqualification or not, I was really loving it. And you know what? That finish actually did not bother me one bit. They're still the tag team champions. The argument can still be made that they look somewhat strong going into the pay-per-view. And, you know, you, you couldn't really crap on that too much. That, that was pretty good how they had utilized them. We also had saw in a fourth match, Gail Kim take on Miss Tessmacher. For me, out of all the matches, and there was about five, six matches total here, I'm leaning more towards five. For me... The Gail Kim versus Miss Tess Walker, hands down, for me personally, one of the best matches of the night. It wasn't as long, but it was just the right amount. It was a longer match than the previous knockout matches that we've been getting within recent weeks. These two girls, they were really telling a damn good story in the ring. I was loving how Tess Marker was bringing it to the former Knockouts champion. I mean, we saw Tess Marker do new stuff that I didn't even know she was capable of. I mean, we saw her do this really ugly elbow driven to the mat first type of body slam. It was something really wicked. I haven't really seen anything like it in quite some time. Definitely devastating. We actually had saw Tara pop up post-match because Tessmarker was able to pick up a victory with that maneuver I had just named. But we had saw Tara try to get into the ring, and she was trying to apply the widow's peak, but Tessmarker was able to counter and hit her with that same move again. I was looking for Taz and Mike Tanay to name that move, but they didn't. They were just like, oh, that was devastating. You know, I, I was looking for them to name it. I don't know, maybe Tess Marker might need to reach out to the fans and have us possibly give that a name. I don't know. I would call it Tess Fantastic. I, I don't know. Or the Tess Slam. I don't know. But that thing was just really devastating. Um you know, what was really interesting about this right here is I love how Tess Marker has just really been playing well off of the heel knockouts that she's been paired up with. She's been working very good with Gail Kim. She's been working exceptionally well with Tara. And you just can't think about what all is going to be in store for the TNA Knockouts champion come Bound for Glory Sunday, as Tara had revealed in a backstage segment just prior to this match here, as she had collided with Brooke Hogan, that her boyfriend was going to be in attendance at the pay-per-view, as she had tried to give a list of demands of what all she wanted 
uh, when she does win the TNA Knockouts title. And Brooke Hogan had to actually put her in her place and say, you know what, you can't make these demands right now. You haven't even won the belt yet. Bump you, bump your boyfriend. So we're finally going to be able to see just who exactly her boyfriend is. I am just really looking forward to this right here. Now, next up, we had also got to see Zima Ion. And Zima Ion, remember, for those of you that had the fortunate pleasure of checking out a early Call That Match special for the Bound for Glory pay-per-view, we had uploaded it just a couple of nights ago for you guys. Now, for those of you that are patiently waiting for it on the downloads, you want to be able to listen to it live on Blog Talk uh, Radio and at our sister website, you know, fam, we got love for you. You know we're going to hook you up. You'll be able to catch that this Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern. But for those of you that had actually got that early jump start and you were able to see it on YouTube, y'all know that I had said that, you know, as of that recording, which we had did it, I think we had did it on a Monday night, early Monday night or morning or something like that, I have said that Zima Ion is not penciled in for Bound for Glory as of that recording. However, I was going to go on ahead and pencil him in anyway because you have all the other TNA championships on the line at this pay-per-view. It just makes sense to have Zima Ion be at the pay-per-view as well. Let's go for it. So it was really nice to see Zima Ion come out as he would address his status at the Bound for Glory pay-per-view as he had revealed that, hey, he's pretty much beaten everybody up that's been within his path. And as a result of that, there's nobody for him to face at Sunday's pay-per-view. Not only is he effing pretty, but he's effing that damn good. He would also talk about how being humble did not get him anywhere, as if anything, it had him be on the sideline, always wondering when he was going to get that call to come on and have a match or two. Did not happen. Well, finally, he stopped being humble, and he just started not giving a damn, and look where it got him, the X Division Championship. Ah, but wait, Mr. Rob Van Dam had came out. And we see Rob Van Dam reveal that he spoke with the Hulkster. And apparently these two had some type of a conversation where RVD insisted that he had a match at Bound for Glory. And Hulkster told him, brother, pick whoever you want to face at Bound for Glory. Go for it. And Rob Van Dam chose Zima Ion. So, checkmate, Zima Ion, your move, bro. So, Rob Van Dam. Zima Ion for the X Division title at Bound for Glory. We got all the titles now in place. They all are going to be making an appearance at Sunday's pay-per-view. A little bit of something for everybody. You can't really go wrong right here, folks. Moving right along now, we saw Aces and Eights, and as I like to call him, that bang-like character sent a very bold message to the Hawkster letting him know that, hey, he's kept his end of the bargain. Joseph Park, he's still okay. They actually showed Joseph Park. He was kicking back. He was eating some takeout food. Looked pretty yummy. He was eating that like like Tom Hanks in that movie Castaway. I, I was really loving the way Joseph was punishing that food in that styrofoam. But we see... The Bang-like character say to the Hawkster, you know, you've been playing this game of chess very well. Didn't know you were such a good player. You know, you mentioned how you picked Bully Ray here. It's a move that we did not expect, but we'll be more prepared for it this Sunday, rest assured. And we also see the Bang-like character say to the Hawkster, you know, there's a question. That was opposed to him a couple of weeks ago, which was, is Hogan locking down the arena to possibly keep the Aces and Eights out, or is he keeping them in? And he promised that one thing was for certain, and that Sunday they really would find out what the real deal is. So Aces and Eights, they made their little cameo right there. I love how that's just continuing on right there. 
And, you know, we had saw in that main event match, you know, we were talking about it as soon as we had came on tonight. It was Jeff Hardy taking on Robert Roode. Very freaking solid contest right here where we had saw a really great match. And, you know, it was – I was actually really loving this match, quite honestly. Now, we actually had saw this in, in a DQ going in favor of Jeff Hardy. And eventually, we got to see the TNA World Heavyweight Champion Austin Aries come out. And he, in a sense, he kind of had a, I hate to say the name, but I'm just going to mention it. He really came off having a CM Punk pipe bomb moment right here, if you will, because he sat up and he bashed Jeff Hardy for being the golden goose right now in TNA. I mean, in a nutshell. Folks, we saw Austin Aries say to Jeff Hardy how he's sick and tired of seeing upper TNA management cater to him and that at this point he saw that the producers were telling him he needed to wrap it up because it was about to be over, but he did not care as he had to say what he needed to say. And he was talking about how he had been asking management for the past couple of months to change his entrance video and change his music because he wanted it to reflect his run as a world champion but they were just putting all the favoritism and energy towards Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries very passionately would sit up and say you know what I don't like how any of this is playing out but I've always been the type of person to look the system in the eyes and I've always gone against it. I will continue to. And we just see Austin Aries just cut this really great, passionate promo on Jeff Hardy. It could definitely leave those of you watching at home saying, okay, was this really a from-the-heart moment? As Austin Aries was claiming that he was going off the script, that he was not saying what he was supposed to be saying right here, leaves you kind of with that doubt here. Personally, I think it was just a fucking fantastic job really being able to sell this rivalry, which, in my honest opinion, has been almost completely forgotten about in recent weeks because it's pretty much been all about Aces and Eights, Hulk Hogan, the Robert Roode, James Storm rivalry. This really hasn't had that much emphasis on it. So it was really nice to see these two guys close out the show tonight as it ended up being Austin Aries telling Jeff Hardy to work the crowd, test how much they love him, and then he tried to do the same thing as well. But the crowd really wasn't that much in favor of him. And eventually we see Jeff Hardy, he's trying to leave the ring. But what happens next? Well, we see Austin Aries, he actually grabs Jeff Hardy from behind, attacks him with that brain buster DDT to end Impact Wrestling Live. So the tone could not be set any higher right now. It's going to be a fantastic pay-per-view coming up this Sunday as now all eyes are set on that 8th annual Bound for Glory pay-per-view. And folks... You definitely want to know what the card is. For those of you that might not be sure what you can expect, here's the list for you of all the great matches that you're going to be able to see at Bound for Glory. As we have Rob Van Dam taking on Zima Ion for the X Division Championship. Magnus versus Samoa Joe for the TNA Television Championship. Aces and Eight versus Sting and Bully Ray. Remember the stipulation in this tag match. If the Aces and Eights win, they'll receive full access to the Impact Zone. If Sting and Bully Ray win, then Aces and Eights will leave TNA forever. Terror versus Miss Tessmacher for the TNA Women's Knockout Championship. But remember, folks, Terror's boyfriend is going to be there. Bobby Roode versus James Storm in a street fight as King Mo Lau will serve as the special guest enforcer. And let's not forget, folks, King Mo, he actually did make a brief cameo early tonight here. Very brief as we had saw Robert Roode try to cut a promo just before 
the match he had with Jeff Hardy as James Storm, he came up, he said, you know what, I know you had hit me from behind. I know what you did. And we see Robert Roode, he's just smiling. He's not even manning up to it. And the two of those guys, they ended up being in a little brawl there. But we saw King Mo, he injected himself into that and told James Storm to just wait until Sunday. We also got the three-way tag team match for the TNA World Tag Team Championships as AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, they'll be taking on Travel Guerrero and Hernandez, and also Christopher Daniels and Kazarian. And, of course, we got that Jeff Hardy versus Austin Aries match. It's going to be one solid freaking pay-per-view. Of course, let's not forget the icon, Sting, who's been in the wrestling business now for almost 30 years, is going to be the first inductee into the TNA Hall of Fame as WWE's Christian will be in attendance to induct the icon. It's going to be a really great freaking pay-per-view right here. This is what we're going to do right now. We're going to go on ahead. We're going to take a commercial break, and then when we come right back, we'll get you guys caught up on the very latest in TNA wrestling-related news. Not really too much has been happening as the major headlines has been all about Hulk Hogan and the unfortunate displeasure of a sex tape that has surfaced. We'll get you guys caught up in case you might have missed it and give you guys some programming notes on what all you can expect from us this weekend. And if we have that time, we will definitely open up the phone line. So we'll take that commercial break right now, and then when we come right back, We'll jump all right into it. You're listening to the Thursday night edition of Impact Showdown Radio coming at you live October 11, 2012. We'll be coming right back in just less than five minutes, folks. Do hang tight. Hey, guys, the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders here of the RCWR Show and Impact Showdown Radio. Just wanted to take this time out to tell you about a really special and cool contest that we are going to be throwing over here all this October as we make our way to our 100th episode of the RCWR Show. That's going to be coming your way this October 23rd at a special start time of 10 p.m. Eastern right here on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR Show and at our sister website at infinity1productions.com. This contest is the WWE 13 Video Game Contest. That's right. And let me tell you guys how you can enter. All you have to do is go to our website at infinity1productions.com. Look for the Donate tab. Click on it and follow the prompts. And what gets you into this contest, folks, is just $1. That is correct. You heard me right. I did not stutter. One dollar gets you into the contest. All the donations that we'll be receiving for this WWE 13 contest is going to be going to a very special and worthy cause. As all this month, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we will reveal the total amount of donations that we have received from you, the listeners, On that 100th episode of the RCWR Show, but wait, it gets better. All of us here that work at the RCWR Show, Impact Showdown Radio, along with the staff at InfinityOneProductions.com will be combining all of our money together as we'll be going in our own pockets and we will double the amount of donations that you, the listeners, are able to donate And we will give all the money to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. That's right, folks. Very worthy cause right here. It's all this month. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now, if you don't feel comfortable donating to us directly, then we highly encourage you to go to Susan G. Komen's website at komen.org. Look for the donation tab button on their site. And you can actually give your dollar amount to them. Then just contact us via Twitter, Facebook, and let us know that you have entered the donation that way. And we'll put you into the contest. Not a problem at all. Up for grabs is your choice of either a Stone Cold Steve Austin WWE 13 Limited Edition game that comes with downloadable content for the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3 
And once again, we will be revealing that lucky winner on the 100th episode of the RCWR show coming October 23rd at a special start time of 10 p.m. Eastern. So make sure that you are there. This is a very special contest for a very worthy cause. If you are under the age of 18, make sure you get your parents' permission. Everybody else... Feel free to go on ahead and hit that donate button as again, it is for a very worthy cause. And that is not the only thing that we have in store for you on the 100th episode of the RCWR show as we'll also be giving away a few other surprise giveaways. So make sure that you are there this October 23rd at special start time of 10 p.m. Eastern, and for all of you that donate, we thank you humbly in advance. Always on the go and don't want to miss an episode of the RCWR Show and Impact Showdown Radio? Then subscribe to us on the iTunes and Zoom marketplaces using keywords, the RCWR Show. Ever get the urge to follow somebody? Then take a free moment during this commercial break to follow us on Twitter at Infinity One Prod. Also on Facebook at Infinity One Production. And just for that, we won't call the cops on you. You're listening to Impact Showdown Radio coming at you live right now on October 11th, 2012. Now, I got to squeeze in the lovely co-producer Tammy right now. I know, co-producer Tammy, that was actually your first time hearing those new batches of commercial. Uh, Hopefully you had uh, appreciated that. I I hope that first one where I was talking there, I hope that wasn't too long for some people. But, you know, I thought it was kind of informative. I might might try to see if I can do a new version of that, make it a little shorter. But, I don't know, I thought it was pretty informative. How would you like that first cut? Mm -hmm, It was informative. Um, I think that it was just a tad too long, but informative. Definitely yeah. informative, and we want to take this time out to, you know, let the listeners know that that's an awesome contest, um, and what a great cause. Yeah, yeah, and it, it really is, and you know, while we're also talking about that, Tammy, you know, before we go any further, we really did not have the chance to say it on the Tuesday Night Wrestling Report edition of the RCWR show, but uh, we definitely, from the bottom of our hearts, we have to give a heartfelt Thank you to our loyal listeners for making the month of September be one of our best in months as the listens, the downloads. It's, you know, I mean, as long as we've been on the air, Tammy, I mean, it was some really strong numbers right there. And we aren't even halfway through this month, and we've already matched our numbers for last month. So that's you know, says a very strong message to us that we are, without a doubt, making our Strive, and uh, we're making our mark in this whole big thing called wrestling internet radio podcast and all that. So, truly an honor. I really didn't get a chance to say thank you to you guys, but thank you. Matt, special thank you to those of you that had checked out the weekend report of the RCWR show from last Saturday, as it was a really good jam packed episode. Also, Matt, shout out for those of you that had checked out the RCWR post show covering. Dave Batista's MMA debut, Tammy, I mean, they, you know, were just overnight. Talk about two overnight sensations right there. Yeah, what, uh, you know, great numbers or actually, you know, great support um, that we get from our listeners, and we so appreciate you um, taking the time out of your busy schedule and um, checking it out, whether it be live or on download. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. So, Tammy, let's jump right into it because we're actually at that mark, and we still got plenty of show time left, but I, for certainty, wanted to talk about this, and I think this is how we're going to do it. We're going to try something a little bit new. I want to talk about this piece, and then I want to bring in callers, and then 
we'll talk about TNA Wrestling News, and then we'll bring in more callers. We'll we'll do it like that. That way we don't have the listeners kind of waiting a little bit too long. So let's jump right into it. So on the Tuesday Night Wrestling Report edition, we were talking about Hulk Hogan, and we were talking about this sex tape that had came out. Now it turns out this sex tape was done at a time where Hulk Hogan, he was at a bad point in his marriage. Keyword here, marriage. And he was good friends with Bubba the Love Sponge, who is a radio personality. And basically what happened was for about two years here, Bubba the Love, he was telling the Hulkster, Hey, buddy, won't you have sex with my wife? It's all good. She won't mind. I don't mind. Help yourself. And Hulkster, he's like, whoa, that's that's pretty crazy, dude. What the hell are you talking about? I don't want to do that. And Bubba's like, no, it's okay, really, really. That's what friends are for. We're, we're, we're amigos. It's cool. And Hulkster, he just kept thinking that maybe Bubba was just playing around. So one night, Hulkster said, what the hell? And he actually does the damn thing. Now, you fast forward six plus years later. And we heard all this hype that was going around that somebody had released this footage, and Hogan is thinking to himself, well, it had to have been Bubba the Love Sponge. It all went down on his watch. Surely it was him. Bubba, he's denying it. Hulkster, he really feels as if he's been betrayed. Now, Tammy, I want to just play a little clip from Hulk Hogan, and it was on the Today Show from yesterday. Now, keep in mind, folks, Hulk Hogan, all these media appearances that he was supposed to make was supposed to be for nothing more than for hyping up the Bound for Glory pay-per-view. Now, I want you guys to keep this in mind. These appearances that he was supposed to be making, a vast majority of them, at least 80% of them, was already locked. He was just supposed to be talking about Bound for Glory. But all this stuff had happened, and this is pretty much what they all want to talk about. So just to give you an idea, in case you might have missed it, you've been busy with work, school, whatever, I just want to play just this four-minute piece that just nips it all in the nutshell, and then we're just going to come right back in, chime in our thoughts. I'm going to let Tammy, because I said a good chunk of what I needed to say, but lovely co-producer Tammy, I definitely want to get your perspective from that female standpoint. And... uh you know, we'll go from there. So let's go on ahead now. I'm going to load this, uh, this audio up. About four minutes, folks. We are back on this Tuesday with more today. And world wrestling icon Hulk Hogan, the man behind Hulkamania. Uh, Hulk. And though he doesn't spend much time in the ring anymore, you can't keep the Hulk down. With his role as general manager of TNA Impact Wrestling, his many business ventures, and rumors of a new reality show, the Hulk has a lot to contend with. Besides other sweaty men. Well, that's exactly right. That's an understatement. <laughs> all right, let's First of all, you're an old friend of ours, and we love you, but you. we have to discuss the elephant in the room. Sure. Okay, there is a sex tape yes, sir. that is out. Yes, sir. It looked like it was shot surreptitiously. You were. I would have looked at it. I didn't. Oh, well, I had to know what was happening. Oh. And, um, <laughs> you know, okay, so you were, tell us when this was shot, how the tape got out. Did you have anything to do with it? Well, first off, I yeah. had no idea there was a camera in the room. Uh huh. <clears throat> it was at a very, very low point. You know, uh -huh. I'm not making excuses. I'm accountable. I was the guy. I was yeah. there. I made the choice. Um, it was at a really low point in my life when sure. I was in a previous marriage when uh -huh. things were bottomed out completely. Yeah. And I was with some friends. I made a wrong choice. And now all of a sudden it surfaces, you know, over six years later. And it's just appalling. It's it's totally flipped my New life and my new world upside down. You're, That's you're married. You're newly married. Yes, and, yeah. and, and you know, it's just it's for me. I'm going full blown to try to find out who did this to me and why. And so what's you don't the motivation. know yet. You don't know. No, yet. I mean I had no idea someone would put a camera in in a room and. Was you know, it no, a hotel room, Hulk? No, it wasn't. It was it was at a friend's uh -huh. house. But okay. there there are no excuses and and I'm if anybody's accountable for my actions, it's me. I always have been and. Mm -hmm. It was just a bad choice and mm -hmm. at, at a low point. The only person's opinion that really matters, though, baby, is your wife. And no, is she doing okay? Yeah, true. Well, well. No, my children. Well, yeah. all right, your children, you're no. right, you're and, right. And, and my children. And how are they doing? They're fine. They know me, they, they understand. They were. 
part of that past life and, and you know yeah, right. that situation I was in they know what I was going through and what was going on on a daily basis my new wife Jennifer is rattled to yeah, say the I least yeah. I mean she's not part of this media right. uh, life or anything she and, doesn't deserve this and yeah. uh, no and it's just it's something that has devastated me and totally I've never been through anything on, on this level so it's okay and just so we're clear at the time this happened you weren't married and she uh, no, wasn't I hadn't, I she I wasn't hadn't even met Jennifer okay. at the time okay yeah. and so I mean okay. you know and you've had a big big change in your life spiritually as well since then oh yeah so, I, I had to so bottom out so what's past out. is past buddy well that's true I mean and, and I did have to bottom out completely yeah. to realize how beautiful life is and this is the only moment you know the whole thing yeah. so for something like this to come up mm -hmm. yeah. for somebody to film something like this what's the motivation the is betrayal it, of it too yeah uh, yeah i mean well there's obviously financial incentive <coughs> for someone you know yeah but, wound up. and let's just pause it right there i don't want to hear any more okay so let's get you guys caught up with a new update on this sex tape as we now know that the person supposedly behind the sex tape release was not Bubba the Love Sponge, Tammy. It turns out that it was a disgruntled employee who was part of Bubba the Love Sponge's staff when he was doing his little radio show. And it turns out Bubba the Love, he had this very bad reputation for not paying his staff. And so what happened was that this staff member who he showed the sex tape to and made a copy for wanted a little bit of payback and he thought what better way to get some payback than to release this Hulk Hogan tape. So now we're hearing, okay, it's either Bubba or it's the person that used to be an employee of Bubba. Either way, it's really bad. Hulk Hogan, you know, I personally, if it was me, well, first of all, I wouldn't even be in that type of a position to begin with. But if it was me and I had to be in that position, either way, this happened on Bubba's watch. And I would think that Hogan would just do the right thing and say, you know what, it was a bad move ever getting hooked up with this guy and his wife should have never happened, you know, I like how he's manning up here, because originally he was sitting up saying, yeah, yeah, Linda, she, you know, she was doing this to me, she was doing that to me, and that was met with a lot of heat from wrestling fans, it was met with a lot of heat all over social media, a lot of people, including, you know, myself, on Tuesday night, my message to the Hulkster was, you know what, be a man, accept responsibility, admit that you made mistakes, that you did wrong, so it was really nice to hear him say, you know, yeah, messed up. This is the point I want to make, and Tammy, I want you to jump in on this and just run right, run right with it, and then we'll open up the phone line. We'll get fan reactions here. I'm looking at this. You know, there's a question that we had got into the other night, which was, okay, should Hulk Hogan be fired from TNA? Because my whole thing was, and you know, Don from New York, shout out to you, buddy. You know, he caught it so perfectly when he chimed in his thoughts about this last night. I share the same sentiments, but what he said really on point, which is we had all this big hype, and Tammy, you remember this. We had all this hype about Hulk Hogan two years ago coming to TNA, the next change, the next big boost in professional wrestling, the next evolution is here for TNA. It is Hulk Hogan. And we fast forward two years later, and we really haven't got anything under Hulk Hogan, let's call it, let's be for real, the Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff reign, probably the only good thing that's happened for TNA is that they are now live, so the dirt sheets, the websites can't sit up and release the spoilers and look all good in the process. That's really the only good thing I see. The knockout matches, they have just been getting lesser and less time. The spotlight is only being given to key knockouts. Spotlight is only being given to key wrestlers as pretty much don't call us, we'll call you is really the name of the game right now. And Tammy, how do you feel? I mean, do you think Dixie Carter should take something like this and say, you know what, this is kind of bad for business because let's remember when China had came into TNA wrestling. 
It looked as if she had a very promising career in, in TNA, just a slight little bit of hope in there. But then once they found out that she was doing a porno, they said, oh, no, 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 no. They haven't had anything to do with her since. Then we saw what happened recently with Miss Testmarker. Yes, we know she's a TNA Knockouts champion, but let's not also forget, and this might come as a shocker to some of you guys, she did do a nude video while she was promoting the whole Hooters girl and all that. I mean, you was able to see her boobs and nice tan line and all that good stuff. So, you know, she's still employed with TNA. We got a video floating around of Hulk Hogan showing his goods, giving the goods. Run with it, Tammy. Well, Lee, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of all over the place. Um, really, first of all, you know, it's probably something of a, um, I mean, and I'm not saying he's not remorseful because he probably is, especially now that he's gotten caught. But the whole thing is I'm glad he changed his way of putting it out there because if he didn't, then it would be somewhat of a okay. So, um, so you're not really addressing it. You're saying, well, 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 who did this to me, and and so on and so forth. No, 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 man, man up. You did it, and you are. Thank goodness that you are, because that shows a little bit of balls. And because he's showing balls, I have a feeling that that's more of a tactic to get back in the good graces of, oh, I made a mistake. Uh, Yeah, you did. I mean, everybody makes mistakes, but eh, that's um, that's quite uh, quite a big one there. Um, But I think it has more to do with that, I think, is the gimmick to get him back into – the people's uh, okay, you know it's it's a little bit more accepting now. I can I can accept it and maybe understand it a little better. So, you know, it has more to do with, and this is what I'm hearing. It has more to do with the clout that you have with the company, not who you are. It, it maybe it is a little bit of who you are because of Paul Hogan, but I mean, okay. So how much money you can make me? who you are, how much I like you, so on and so forth. Because if I don't, and you're really a has-been to a point, then you know what? Whatever you just did, that's okay. We don't really need you. I mean, that's a pretty good excuse. Okay, fine, no problem. You're out. So, you know, if he didn't start saying, okay, I made a mistake, okay, this is, you know, this is wrong, I did it, I, you know, I own up, I'm being a man, I'm throwing some balls, then great, but if it doesn't if it doesn't stop with this sex tape stuff, then honestly it completely takes away from his his job. To be honest, with TNA, his job is to promote the product, not Hulkamania. Okay, I mean, but Tammy, you, you but Tammy to... let me but Tammy, let me jump in here. I, I mean, you made very valid points. But I want you to be pretty direct right here, which is should TNA president Dixie Carter look at what's happening here? Let's think back. Also, TNA wrestling fans, I want you guys to think back too. Let's recall now when Jeff Jarrett was sleeping around with Karen Jarrett behind Kurt Angle's back while they were still married. And then when it all, you know, when the shit hit the fan, you know, Dixie Carter say, okay, you know what, Jeff Jarrett, Karen, y'all need to kind of disappear for a little bit. I can't be having all this disruption. And at this point, Tammy, Jeff Jarrett, he had already coughed up his little majority shares of TNA Wrestling to Dixie and Panda Energy. So for him to be oust of the company that he co-founded, you know, a lot of people could kind of look at that as that pivotal point that had caused that rift between Jeff Jarrett and Dixie Carter 
you know, just just taking all that. I mean, just look at what we're dealing with right now with the Hawks. There should this be well, enough? Well, it's already been proven. It's already been proven that she's not going to look at. It. I mean, everything that do you has think been it's because of in intimidation? Week, but do you, wait, wait. But do you think it's because of intimidation of who Hulk Hogan is and the fear of losing that that name, that big draw? That she's well, not doing it. That's a very good possibility. That's a very good possibility. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, it hasn't really changed because you saw him on on Impact tonight. I want to say this. I want to say this, and I want to bring in. I want to bring in Homie afterwards and get his thoughts on this. You know, two quick things here. Number one, we asked you guys on our website: Should Dixie Carter? Fire Hulk Hogan over the sex tape, and you were given some options. And Tammy, it is damn, it's a tight race right now. There is not one vote that really leans more. Okay, this is what the majority of folks are saying. It is dead even right now. A lot of people, they're a little conflicted right here. The second thing that I want to say is, you know, I wish Hulk Hogan would have did something totally unexpected tonight and I wish he would have got on that microphone tonight and I wish he would have said live right there in the Impact Arena Dixie Carter um, Eric Bischoff Nick Brooke my ex-wife Linda you know I I know I shouldn't be saying this right now but I I feel I have to Uh, I need to say this and especially to those of you watching at home right now y'all know About that tape that's running around, I humbly apologize. The spotlight is supposed to be on these good young men and women that get in here, lace up a pair of boots, entertain you all week in, week out. It's supposed to be about them and this biggest event that is coming up known as Bound for Glory, one of our biggest pay-per-views of the year. I'm humbly sorry to all of you, to the people in the back, the production crew. I'm sorry to everybody for this crap I'm going to try to make it right Please continue to believe in me Don't lose faith in me Because it's a challenge for me every day But I'm still trying to do what I need to do I really just felt that would have been A really fucking classy move For Hulk Hogan to do And it honestly it would have scored him Even more brownie points I feel Let's go on ahead Let's go to homie right now Who's patiently been waiting Because he definitely wanted to chime in His thoughts on this as well as what else had happened on Impact tonight. Homie, you live on the air, my friend. Hey, how's it going this evening? Hey, hey, pretty good, bro. I agree with both of you. I think it's all about the status of how you are in TNA. You know, if it was Magnus with the sex tape going around, I'm pretty sure he'd be really in a heartbeat. But mm-hmm. since it's Hulk Hogan, and he's pretty much the star of the company who brings the fans in every week, uh, of course he's not going to be inspired. I don't think Big Dixie has the balls to do it. And I totally agree with you. Uh, you know, I guess you could say it's bad timing. He goes on these radio shows to promote Bound for Glory, and it ends up all being about the sex tape. But you got to think about the, the shows he goes on. How the hell did it? You're not, you know, they don't care about Bound for Glory, like Howard Stern and, and all that stuff. I mean, they don't care about the pay-per-view. They care about the sex tape because that's what's hot right now. I mean, it's partially Will Hogan's fault for picking those shows to go on. He could have right. easily canceled those and went on pure wrestling shows, such as, you know, any rush wrestling show would have been better than going on Howard Stern, who's going to bring it up and get into it and get deep into it, you know? Yeah. It's just mistakes everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like this always happens with Hulk Hogan. He goes, I mean, last year, I believe, he went on to promote Bound for Glory, and he did nothing but not promote Bound for Glory. And it's just like it's a repeating process. He's done nothing for TNA, but, you know, Dixie, I guess, doesn't see it that way. I guess you see butts in the seats when they go to Impact every week and the merchandise sells for Hogan and mm-hmm. automatically says, oh, I, we can't fire him because he's what brings the fans in, which is totally not true. Like tonight, Impact, I actually enjoyed it. We got, what, maybe two segments of Hulk Hogan, and that was it? Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. And it was more about... Austin Aries and Jeff Hardy, which they didn't do the whole month of the pay-per-view, but the last week of the pay-per-view they promoted. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, it's like, we're, 
You know, I don't even think that championship match is even going to main event down for Glory pay per view. I think it's going to be the tag match. Right. But other than that, I thought it was a good uh, a good show, and y'all make some valid points, especially your co-producer. Yeah, that's that's the lovely co-producer Tammy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's a very touchy subject right here. It's a very touchy subject, and you know, I definitely want to pick your brain before we go to the next caller, homie. Do you think? I want you to go on record here. Do you think Dixie Carter just doesn't have it in her? Do you think she's intimidated by just who this man is, everything that? He's represented. You, you, you think she's intimidated by that, or is it a case where, as some fans will point out, you know, Dixie Carter, she's a little bit lightheaded is a nice way of saying, you know, I don't really, I don't like saying the word, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. A lot of people think she's, she's kind of dumb when it comes to making I those, agree. you know. I agree, a hundred percent. I think, uh, and I don't mean to be mean or harsh. I think mm-hmm. Dixie Carter is an idiot. I think she's dumb. I don't think she knows anything about the wrestling business. And she brings in all these old guys back to hope that they can reproduce her show and get better ratings, which doesn't happen. What has Hogan gone for TNA the whole time he's been there? Mm-hmm. Nothing. He doesn't Nothing. Have anything. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't have the ball to fire him because she thinks, oh, there's so many fans in the impact zone. It's because of Hogan. It's not because it's Jeff Hardy or Austin Aries or, you know, anybody else on the roster. And like your co-producer said, if it was anybody else but Hogan or it could have been Jeff Hardy with the sex tape. She's mm-hmm. not going to fire them because of the merchandise stuff. Yeah, but if it's, you know, Magnus or Doug Williams or anybody like that, they would have been released immediately. And Hogan probably would have been in the process of egging her on to do it. But it's Hogan. He's untouchable, you know. He can't get fired. He can't get released. That's that's what I don't understand. Right. And but you guys make valid points. He should have went out there and said, you know, I heard there's a tape going around that you know was when I was in a bad place, and I totally apologize to the fans and to the roster that this has been out here and you know something. Yeah. But act like it's not happening. Yeah. Which is, which is a mistake. Yeah, yeah, and you know, homie, that that's what's even more insulting about this. And you hit it dead on the nail. I mean, I highlighted it there, but we can't stress that enough. And homie, thank you for that call. Very good points indeed. You know, Tammy, very valid point. You know, I'm sitting here, and I actually had the nerve to rewind the few times I saw Hulk Hogan. I'm like, okay, so I didn't miss anything here. Hulk Hogan doesn't make any type of an acknowledgement. This was his platform. This was his time to reach all those millions and millions of people at home and apologize and missed opportunity right here. Right. The, but honestly, you know, what it is is more of the same in Dixie Carter um, having people run the tail between their, their, their head between their legs and or the tail between their legs, basically, sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's, oh, well, out of sight, out of mind. Not really, you know. It's absolutely on the tip of everybody's tongue. They're just not asking. Mm-hmm. And weird. that absolutely should have been mentioned. You know, and, and as Homie said, but here's one of the things that I, you know, think is if Dixie Carter would put the same amount of energy into her talent as she does to all these big main people, she could really get the same numbers because the people who want to see TNA are wanting to see wrestling. I don't know. You know, we got to show some love to our boy Philip in the chat room. He he brought up very valid points indeed. He agrees. He says, you know, Dixie Carter is not going to do anything. It's freaking Hawk Hogan. I think Hawk is right to tackle this head on. But there's that very valid point. Dixie Carter, not going to do anything. Let's go to our good friend Dave in the Michigan area now, get his thoughts on this, because I know he definitely wanted to chime in his thoughts. Dave, you live on there, my friend. Hey. I mean, I was going to come out and say how Hogan just had a book out, and it seems like kind of funny, you know, bound for glory, and all of a sudden the sex tapes get released. Mm -hmm. But about firing Hogan, I mean, if she fired Hogan, 
who else would she get to go on these talk shows? Who else would – Hogan's a brand. Everyone knows who Hulk Hogan is. Everybody. You don't have – you could not watch wrestling in 30 years, and you know who Hulk Hogan is. That's true. He will get Dave, in the door. Right, but true. Dave, Dave, come on. Let's be for real here, man. And we could bring back in homie who's still listening. And we got a, I know we got a ton of callers that will definitely agree. We – it's very, very, very rare that we see Hulk Hogan – come on to these other shows, and he goes at great length to talk about whatever pay-per-view TNA is doing. You know, Tammy, if we would have let that Hulk Hogan clip play just a little bit longer as he was on the Today Show, because I actually watched that whole segment. It was pretty much Bound for Glory was mentioned in, like, I don't know how many seconds. What was it really about? The sex tape. And, oh, so, Hulkster, you are now going into your own little business now. Tell us about that. Yeah, brother. I own, la, 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 la. and it's like every single time you see the Hulkster pop up, and he's supposed to be talking about TNA. It's like that's it's not it's a back burner. That's not really it, it's about. It's always been about, and this has been Hulk Hogan for years, bro. Hulk Hogan just cares about one person, and that's himself. But one thing I have noticed lately, at least the last few months, anyway, with his interviews, he has been wearing that Impact Wrestling T-shirt. And that's saying Impact, what is that? And if some casual fan, you know, so that they go look up Impact Wrestling, say, oh, he's doing this now, let me check this out. That's how you're going to get that casual fan as well. At least he's still wearing the shirt now. But, dude, that shirt, don't, let's be for real, though, that shirt don't mean jack shit. How many times have we seen the WWE champion CM Punk pop up on David Letterman, Jimmy Kimmel, Conan O'Brien, who's the other guy, Jimmy Fallon, Jay Leno? How many times have we seen Big Show? How many times have we seen Chris Jericho? How many times have we seen Triple H? How many times have we seen all those guys make their rounds on those respected talk shows? They are pushing a Raw is War or SmackDown shirt. They're coming out there with their business suits on, and they're able to talk a great length about that respected company, the pay-per-view that's getting ready to come up. A T-shirt don't unfortunately mean anything. I mean, Tammy, you and me could walk down the street with the RCWR shirt. Ain't nobody going to really catch on to that. I could put on big bold letters right up underneath it, Wrestling Radio Show. Ain't nobody going to really be able to know exactly what it is, not unless you're really going out there and your face is out there to a point where, okay, oh, yeah, we know exactly who that person is. We know exactly what that person is about. We know exactly what they're selling. Every time Hulk Hogan pops up on a, on a radio show or a TV show, it doesn't matter if he's wearing a shirt. He's not really plugging it. Yeah, but he's not. Gonna, no one else is going to get on the show like Hulk Hogan is either. What's the point of having because, Hulk Hogan come onto the show if he's not properly pushing the brand, though? He has been pushing the brand in two years, but what he's still doing, he's still being sold as the Impact General Manager, a TNA Impact General Manager. He's still being – he's not talking about it at length, but they're not there to hear about Impact. They're just there to hear about his sex tape, honestly. That's what's going on right now. Like last year, when he was facing Sting, he wasn't really promoting that at all either. Nah. Right, and that's kind of what we were saying, you know, Hulk Hogan is honestly, you know, basically going on the shows to promote himself, you know, and and what he's doing next, I mean, honestly, you know, good for him, but that's not the time or the place. Exactly. Coming on to promote a product, you're coming on to promote a product. Exactly, and see, that's the thing that we need to drive home to you guys, because see, we know a thing or two about advertising, okay, we do we do a lot of dirty work over here, you know, and um, it, it's one of those. Tammy, run, run, run with that. Give give them a little insight there. Um, well, I mean, basically, you know, to get a product out, it's all about marketing. You know, it's all about getting your name out there. Just like Lee said, if you're going down the street to wearing a shirt, nine times out of ten, they're going to look at it and like, oh, okay. But honestly, they're not going to react to it. They're, it's going to be like, oh, okay, you know, it's just one more thing, one more way, you know. So basically, it's all about getting your name out there. It's all about the marketing aspect of it. You know, you you have to do the legwork to to get the product to where it needs to be. I mean, and that's 
what it is. That's that's how you run a business, whether yes. it's a small mom and pop or whether it's a multi-million dollar corporation. You know, it's all a, a business. It's all about marketing and so on and so forth, you know. Good anal good analogy. Let's say I were looking to hire somebody to advertise our shows. Let's say I'm able to score them a sweet deal going on to a let's say let's say hypothetically speaking, let's say I'm able to get this person to go on to a show and like David Letterman and I'm able to get them on there and they're interviewed and they're able to talk about the show. Right? That's all that they are supposed to be talking about. They're supposed to be representing our brand. They're supposed to be pushing the hell out of it. They're supposed to be talking about it. They are not supposed to just come out there, mention it within like 90 seconds, and then talk about what they all are getting themselves into and whatever project they got lined up. The spotlight is really supposed to be about them pushing that brand. You know, and unfortunately, you know, I, I mean, I can, I could appreciate Dave's argument, you know, but, you know, I'm not going to even try to say, you know, we know more about Hulk Hogan, but, you know, it's just one of those well-known facts about Hulk Hogan for a lot of years. He's always been a, a selfish person that's just cared nothing but about himself. You know, I love telling this story to people all the time. Tammy, I know you heard this story before, which is... um me and uh, my best friend, uh, he had this friend that actually used to be a limo driver. And this limo driver actually used to take Hulk Hogan all around the cities. He would be one of his main go-to drivers. And, you know, I always get a chuckle out of it, like especially when I had heard about what happened with the Bubba the Love Sponge tape and all that. I'm thinking to myself, Hogan's been cheating on Linda for years. I mean – I remember his limo driver. He was used to tell us stories about how he would pick up Hulk Hogan and Hulk Hogan would get like two, three different women and he would just tell our driver friend to just drive around in circles for a good minute. And Hogan was doing his business in the back of the limo. You know, so you know, you can sit up and tell me that you found Jesus and you know, you you know, you've done this and you've been trying to do this to change. Your stripes are always gonna remain the same. Absolutely. He's sorry, you, know, you know, he's sorry because it's come to caught. light. You know, right. If he was really a man about it, you know, he would have sat up and during the whole divorce proceedings, you know, maybe he could have said something to Linda privately or whatever like that. You know, he could have been a man about it right then and there if he was really that Sorry, and, and he wanted acceptance with his newfound life and his wife and all that. You know, you just can't sit up, wake up one day and say, okay, I want a new life. I want to start over. I want to do everything right. No, that's not how it works. In order to get on the path of right, you have to admit your wrongs first. And then the change comes. Then the change comes. Exactly. Let's say this, folks, and we're going to end it on a high note. Let's not forget what all was happening there with Scott Steiner earlier this summer, okay? Hulk, Hulk Hogan, remember? Scott Steiner, they were saying all kinds of stuff, back and forth. Hogan may not be playing the same type of dirty games as openly as he once was, but he's still playing the same damn move, and I'm sorry, but anybody that comes onto a show like today, you know, honestly, what should have happened was the Hawks should have sat up and said, look, I'm not going to come on these shows if this is all you're going to talk about. I just want to talk about Bound for Glory at my own time, at my own pace. I'm going to be talking about this sex tape. Until then, I just want to talk about Bound for Glory. And if they decided at the last minute they did not want to have him on to the show, then you know what? That's their loss. And that's honestly standing your ground and putting your foot down and then this is what I'm going to do. Exactly. You know, it, absolutely, homie's right. You know, you yeah. go on those type of shows, um, you know, to talk about other things. Exactly. Howard Stern is not interested in talking about those type of things. Howard, it, Howard is interested in talking about dirt. 
Showbiz Tonight is another example. You know, you know showbiz. You know, showbiz tonight. Wrestling. They don't care about no damn wrestling. They care about the gossip, the the, mm-hmm. the stuff that makes the headlines, the meat and potatoes. Because that's you know. what sells the shows. You know, and you know what, folks? Some of you may be sitting up saying, "Well, no, there's really no way Hulk Hogan could have just popped up on any show and just talked about." Yeah, he could have. It's right up there with the same type of wrestlers that get released from their TNA, WWE, Ring of Honor contracts. And there's just this big ball of confusion as to why they had left that company. All of a sudden, they're a really hot commodity. Everybody wants them onto the show. Everybody wants to know why they left. Was there any bad blood? And what does that wrestler do? That wrestler is kicking back. They're cherry-picking the time, the place, what show they're going to reveal all that information on. And then once they have sat up and put that information out there, majority of them will sit up and say, okay, you know what, these questions keep being asked. I've already answered those questions. you got to listen to this show if you want to know the answers. I'm not going to be answering those questions anymore. So here was a case right here where the ball was in Hogan's corner. He didn't have to do a full house media blitz of all these appearances just talking about the sex tape. Well, Lee, just like you said, you know, honestly, he should have redirected. He should have redirected the question and said, you know what, I'm really not on this show to talk about that. You know, um, I appreciate you having me on the show, but um, I'm honestly here to talk about Val for Glory. And, you know, those questions can be asked, you know, after the show or at a later time, but I'm, I'm not at liberty to talk about that right now. And here's the name that we forgot about, and I'm glad Philip has said it. He's in the chat room here. He said, let's not forget Ultimate Warrior said that Hogan offered him Linda. So, you know, don't be too surprised, you know. Wow. Hogan's been uh, been a bad motherfucker for a very long time (laughs) now, folks. (laughs) Yeah, very, very bad boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could talk about this all night, but look, let's get you guys caught up on what we're going to be doing for the rest of this weekend. And, uh, you know, oh, yeah, we did promise you guys TNA wrestling news. There really hasn't been, unfortunately, that much news going on except for that major headline. But you'll be happy to know very briefly that TNA wrestling, they have put back up Miss Velvet Sky's profile. It's now back up on her website as they are said to be very close to working out a deal with her to come back to the organization. So very good news for you guys that like to see those pigeons loose. I know I'm one of them. Also, it said that Tara has signed a new contract with TNA. As far as how long this new contract is, we're not really sure yet. We'll have more details on that as it becomes available but, yeah, it looks like Terra's going to be sticking around in TNA just a little bit longer. Good news right there. Other than that, that's pretty much been the main two things that's jumped out there. Other than TNA, they have now formed some type of a partnership with several overseas uh, television uh, uh, companies to bring TNA Impact new original Impact Wrestling shows to those different parts of the region. So TNA, they're finally starting to expand. A lot of this will finally start coming into more fruition in 2013 is what we're starting to hear. So really good news for TNA there. It's just unfortunate that all these good things that's been happening to them, Tammy has just been overshadowed by this. Hopefully this can be died down in time. Um, so that we can just focus on TNA, which stands for Total Nonstop Action, and not and you know. So, exactly. Because <laughs> right now that's exactly what it stands for. Exactly. Yeah, brother. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so let's tell you guys what we're going to be doing this weekend. So this Saturday at two o'clock p.m. Eastern, you'll be able to catch a very special episode of the RCWR show, Call That Match Special. I'm going to be offering match predictions for Sunday's Bound for Glory pay-per-view. If you love picking my brain, trying to figure out who I'm going to choose as the winners, you want to check that out. You'll be able to hear that live on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show and at our sister website at infinity1productions.com. It all leads into the RCWR post show coming this Sunday. 
It's going to be at 11 p.m. Eastern, right after the Bound for Glory pay-per-view. We're going to get you guys caught up on all the fallout from all the matches. It's going to be a very historic night as TNA brings up these uh, brings us the eighth annual Bound for Glory pay-per-view. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to get live reactions from you guys, of course. I'm making sure we dedicate 30 minutes of that show to just getting fan reactions. So if you have any friends that love watching wrestling right along with you, you make sure you have them chime on in their thoughts on that post show. It's going to be jam-packed. It's going to be awesome. The wrestling conversations, it may stop here for now, but it'll continue on our website at infinityoneproductions.com, also on Facebook at Infinity One Productions, and on Twitter at Infinity One Prod. For the lovely co-producer Tammy, and Tammy, you hit one or two home runs tonight. You go, girl. <laughs> Why, thank you. You're welcome. I'm the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders. We had some pretty good fan interactions tonight. Homie the Clown, good points. Thank you. Dave, very valid points. Thank you. Philip, showing love in the chat room. Thank you. Thanks to everybody that checked out tonight's show. Thanks to those of you that's going to be checking it out on the downloads. Be sure to subscribe to us in the iTunes, Zoom, Marketplaces. Also on Stitcher, keywords, the RCWR show. You know Stitcher, they got that contest going on right now. It's the first annual Stitcher Awards. Do us a huge favor. Vote for us. You can choose us for Best New Original Show, Best Sports Commentating Show. Just a couple of nice little categories that will catch your eye, and you'll look at it, and you'll say, yeah, let me put them in that category. You can vote once a day. That's the best part. All the votes will be tallied up on October 19th, and then they'll select winners the week after. So tell your friends, tell your family, all y'all that check out the show, show some love. Give us those votes. Even if we don't win, we don't care. Just we want those votes. Let's send a message that we're making our mark and our voices are being heard loud and clear. Till we hear from you guys this weekend, y'all take care. And be safe and kind to one another, folks. We'll see you this Saturday and Sunday for our Bound for Glory coverage. Everybody take care.